fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. The intention this morning for today is to celebrate the fruit that is exemplified in this community, in those that sit in these chairs. So it comes from Galatians 5. If you want to turn with me, find your way there. In Galatians 5.22, it says, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. There is no law against these things. Keep in mind, those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us, Burwood Church, follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. Would you bow your heads with me as we pray this morning? Father, we're excited of who you are, what you mean to us, what you look like when you're lived out in our lives. Fruit is such a beautiful thing. May we see the fruit of your hand, of your spirit, enacted in our lives. We pray to give this morning. Amen. So I want to talk about the idea of being fruitful. And what is fruit? That's what I want to look at this morning. The Bible talks about fruit in a number of ways. And it's usually about what it means. It uses the word, the term fruit for success sometimes, for work, for the produce of what we do. In Proverbs, um, it, it talks about, um, uh, you know, it says, uh, thieves are jealous of one another's loot, but the godly are well-rooted and bear their own fruit. So fruit is born from what we do. In Ecclesiastes, the Bible uh, talks of fruit in this way. It says, and people should eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of their labor, for these are gifts from God, fruits of our labor. Deuteronomy says, your fruit baskets and bread boards will be blessed. So this fruit is something that we produce. It's, um, it's what we enact. It's what um, our intentions bring forth. And there's so much good fruit. I think Virgil and Beatrice got it down pat they talked about that pear for a long, long time. And you know what? Our rec- that was very similar to our conversation on the train that day. We, we rode, um, we got on at Blackburn Station. We got off in Richmond. The whole entire way, there was four people. There was one Alric Marsh, one Brian Roberts, one Chamungu Kamanga, and one Sarah Courtney. Alric and Brian had a great time on the train. Sarah and Chamungu, not so much. <laughs> yeah, we discussed fruit for a long time. And when we think of it in, in, the, in this biblical idea that fruit um, is what we produce, there's so much in life that is fruitful, fruits to bear. Um, you know, for me, I mean, I'm so embarrassed that Auric said that I was an eccentric man with a lot of like passions for things because um, unbeknownst to him, I've actually prepared <laughs> like a bunch of things that I'm passionate about. <laughs> and, um, and these are things that I want, like these are fruits that I would like to create in my life. So have a listen to this. And it's uh, things that um, we all want to, to create, I suppose. But I just, I just ran through a list in my own head of, of, of types of fruit 
that I like seeing enacted in other people. So I have friends that, um, in terms of spiritual fruit, um, that have studied fasting and healing. And I love that. I, I have, you know, my grandparents um, can recite scripture um, like that. They have, they have scripture that applies to, you know, God's word applies to every moment or situation in their lives. Um, I have a friend that um, her life is led by God and she is such a godly leader um, in her passions, in her work, in her, in her development in other countries. Prayer is a beautiful fruit. Athleticism, the fruits of athletes. You know, today is grand final day and, you know, this afternoon when Sydney defeat Hawthorne, we're going to remember one of the greatest coaches that they ever had, Tommy Hafey. Love Tommy Hafey. If you don't know who he is, um, he was just an inspiration. You know, he he ran in in his 80s. He was running, you know, Ks and Ks and Ks a day. He'd go for swims each morning. He'd, uh, you know, get up, do push-ups, sit up, like 600 sit-ups in the morning at the age of 80-something, something, something. Um, I love, that's, a, that's an inspiration. That's such a beautiful fruit that he's born in his life. Uh, you know, rowing, sailing. I have friends that are doing this. Eloise is rowing along the Yarra, you know, once or twice a week. I love that. What beautiful fruit. Um, Matthias is going to take me rock climbing. I don't know. Uh, we haven't done it yet, but that's a fruit that I really enjoy. Team sports, I've never been a part of, but I've been playing tennis this year with, uh, with Rafa's cousins, and um, that's our team name. And uh, because... Um, <laughs> There's Sarah, Caitlin, Mitchell, you know, um, Matt, myself. Yeah, um, financial fruit, investing, creating. You know, when I studied entrepreneurship, I got a, the best part about it was that I got a taste of the entrepreneurial family of Melbourne. These like creatives that were just doing amazing things, I, and I really, really was blessed by that. Work. I have a friend that set his number. Um, you know, when he was young, he said, this is how much I want to earn one day. And when he got to it, he said, okay, well, that's the number that I set. Um, some people are going to earn more than me. Some people are going to learn less. But now he's moving on and he's doing other things in the community. Um, I think that's a cool fruit. Technology, bitcoins, energy, health. These are cool fruits. Health, diet, sleep, exercise, habits, learning. One thing I really, really want to do is never stop learning. And this is a fruit that's really interested me, being widely read. Um, Judith uh, listens to a lot of podcasts, as do I, and I found that a, real, a really cool blessing. Further study, music, instruments, language, art, recreation, sculpture, drawing, cooking, cars, bikes, surfing. Four drive is a fruit that I want to develop. Anything made on a GoPro is something that I want to develop. Home, the functionality of a home, the beauty of a home, the sustainability of a home. I got to sit in um, Ben and Marjorie's home, their, their new building, a couple of weeks ago, and we had lunch in the frame of their house. It was really, really cool. All of these fruits are wonderful and, and worthy. And, and my question is, and it might be your question, um, is where to start. And if you have started, because the question where to start is, is I mean, this is a youth service. Um, and, and I tell you what, one of the things about today is that we wanted to be intentional about this being a service to this community. Um, and we're going to look at that a little further in the program. But if you're wondering where to start in the fruit that you're going to make in your life or you have made fruit in your life, let us pursue the fruit of the Spirit to shape what we create. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Whatever we're pursuing, let it grow with the fruit that God ripens in us. So how? How does the Spirit permeate through our fruitfulness? 
Jesus talks about it in, in um, the book of John. He talks about being the vine and us being the branches. John 15, verse 5 says, Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. So there's a clue here. Verse 7, it says, But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. The fruit of the Spirit is worked out in our lives. So it's not something that we do. It's something that is a result of God. And we remain in God to see this come about in whatever we're pursuing. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So don't be mistaken like I am. When I think of those things, those fruits, I think of something very meek and mild. The fruits of the Spirit are not soft. You know, love, joy, gentleness, happiness, rainbows, puppies. That's the kind of picture that I usually have of the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit, what the Holy Spirit makes, is not soft. The fruit of the Spirit is not merely meek and mild lullabies that we sing to children about things that are lovely and sweet. The fruit of the Spirit can make you cry, can make you thirst, can make you weep, can make you embrace, can bring you to your knees, leave you dripping in sweat. Think about patience. Patience, a patience that's so hard you'll grit your teeth or scream into a pillow. Kindness Kindness that is an act so courageous your heart beats even at the thought of considering what you're about to do for someone else and the embarrassment you might have to withstand. Gentleness, gentleness in a situation, think about it, that you didn't think would have been possible to be gentle in. In fact, you break down and cry at the idea that the Spirit had been working in you and through you in that moment to keep you gentle. In a, in, a, in a situation in which you wouldn't want to be. The, the fruit of the Spirit is a radical, powerful fruit. So I want to leave my own uh, paradigm, my own thinking that the fruit of the Spirit is just something that is soft. And this is how I relate it to today. In a week in which Melbourne, in which our city has had a little taste of terror in Endeavour Hills, in the city... What else but the Holy Spirit is going to withstand fear in the midst of hate, uncertainty, anger, and distrust that's building towards the Muslim community? Yeah? Because the Spirit produces peace. The fruit of the Spirit produces love. The Spirit produces kindness, faithfulness. What does that look like? when as a community we start to become scared, when we start to become uncertain, we don't know what other people believe. When we're walking down the street, when we're in Endeavour Hills, we're in Springvale down next to the mosque. We've had a taste of tearing our town. But the fruit of the Spirit is a radical, powerful fruit. But they're not just soft. The fruit of the Spirit is beautiful, powerful and radical, but also beautiful. To see God in action through the masterpiece of a human being is the most attractive, wonderful, breathtaking beauty that there is. It's like Little Waterloo Bay in Wilson's Promontory. (laughs) Am I right, Ben? Am I right? Um, You know... If you haven't been to Wilson's prom, if you go hiking around it, um, there's, you start off from Tidal River, you set out, and you know after a day and a half, you, you hike all day, you have your pack on you, and then you climb, 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 you have lunch, you keep climbing up, and then as you follow the coast around, you start to descend, and when you start to descend, you spy off in the distance this little secluded paradise called Little Waterloo Bay. And 
it's so refreshing to see. The fruit of the Spirit is refreshing. Seeing the fruit of the Spirit produced in the lives of people around you is like being able to fly. It's like a glorious sunrise. It's like a never-ending mango. The fruit of the Spirit is like eating chocolate for the first time. It's like being able to run for miles and never getting tired. It's like taking a photo and the photo uh, you know, captures the true beauty and awesomeness of the moment. It's like waking up and realizing it's Sabbath. The fruit of the Spirit is like a little bird flying right up to you and landing on your hand and sings a little sweet song to you. The fruit of the Spirit is like finding money in an old clothes pocket. It's like church lunch after this program. It's like the lack of cars on the road during school holidays. It's like waking up and realizing you're in Narnia. It's like the hurt of laughing so uncontrollably hard that tears appear. It's like Hawaii. The fruit of the Spirit is like in a whole block of chocolate and realizing there's still a little bit left in the packet. It's like swimming with amazing wild dolphins that naturally do tricks. It's like taking off your heavy pack after hiking. It's like seeing your loved ones at the airport when they come home from overseas. It's like finding the sunken pirate ship and all of its treasures. It's like feeling close to God. It's like walking on water. The fruit of the Spirit is like knowing God's plan for your life. It's like sleeping under a blanket of stars. It's like folding gold, it's finding gold at the end of a double rainbow. It's like seeing two elderly people in love. The fruit of the Spirit, it's like standing on a mountaintop naked. It's like an answer to prayer. It's like haystacks. It's like um, the fruit of the Spirit is like percussion played well. Um, it's like getting in your car and seeing a full tank of petrol. It's the, it's like the, it's, the fruit of the Spirit is like the thought that Jesus constantly redeems and restores no matter what we've failed to achieve or what we've done. It's like pear nectar. It's like a dad that picks you up when your car breaks down. It's like a road trip with friends that's unexpectedly disastrous and equally delightful. It's like a green fruit smoothie with kale and spinach that doesn't break your blender. The fruit of the Spirit is love. It's gentleness. It's patience. It's kindness. It's goodness. It's joy. It's peace. It's self-control. The question I have for us is what does this look like for our community? I think for us guys... It looks like the spirit working in us as a community of men. It looks like faithfulness to women, where we uphold and commit to the sake of women shaped by the spirit in our community. I think that is a really powerful and important thing in our lives. I think that for men, that faithfulness starts in our personal lives. And I, and I just, I'm, I'm really excited by what that would look like in our community. The term evangelism, what does evangelism look like? Produced by the, the fruit of the Spirit. You know, today, um, after lunch, um, Wayne Marsh is uh, being appointed as the outreach evangelism guy for this year. And he's asking, what, what does that mean for our church? And he said to me last week, Brian, if you could find like three to five people to come along after lunch to talk about this, um, that would be really good. And I forgot to do it, so I'm doing it now. <laughs> and he said to me, people that, re- that, that have, find someone that has a real heart for Jesus and for evangelism. And... And I thought, you know what, if, if you want to come along to that, come along. If that's you, come along. Um, if when you hear the words outreach and evangelism, you cringe a little and you think, oh, my goodness, how annoying, come along. Because, because I think when we can redefine things, when we can redefine the term evangelism to be what it could be, defined by what the, the Spirit creates, the fruit of our community, well, I think that could be really cool. So whatever it may look like in our own personal life and in the life of us together, fruit is something that grows, yeah? 
the imagery is that the poison is, is that fruit comes from a tree. Fruit is seasonal. Fruit sl- happens slowly over time. Fruit is something that will slowly develop in our character as we remain in God. He's the vine, we're the branches. In our community, fruit is slowly born, but when it ripens, oh boy, does it ripen. Yes, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. So today, let's celebrate. Yeah, Let's celebrate the fruit that is made in our community. And I'll read out the... um, The fruit of the Spirit from the message version. But what happens when we live God's way? He brings gifts into our lives, much the same way that fruit appears in an orchard. Things like affection for others, exuberance about life, serenity. We develop a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion in the heart, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people we find ourselves involved in loyal commitments not needing to force our way in life able to marshal and direct our energies wisely since this is the kind of life we have chosen the life of the spirit let us make sure that we do not just hold it as an idea in our heads or a sentiment in our hearts but work out its implications in every detail of our lives. That means we will not compare ourselves with each other as if one of us were better or another worse. We have far more interesting things to do with our lives, church. We'll celebrate that today. Each of us is an original.